All right, welcome to another episode of Frags and Beer Radio, um, radio news where we talk about the last week in geek. Um, uh, we cover a lot of different things, technology, movies, uh, comic books, gaming. Um, tonight we're going to cover uh, a little bit of everything, um, and I'm joined tonight, of, as always, by Russell Michaels. Welcome, Russell. Hello. And tonight we have Diogenes, who is a friend of mine from Twitter, who also I reached out to because I, a little bird told me that he was a med student and might have some firsthand experience with one of the topics we're going to talk about. So welcome, Diogenes. Hi, yeah. And uh, I'm a, I'm, For the record, I'm a third year medical student. That's... If that carries any weight. It, it does with me at least because that makes you a lot smarter than me when it comes to talking about um, the study of uh, behavior sciences. I mean, it, I don't know, is your specialty in psychology or behavioral sciences or is it? It is a very personal interest. Okay. But, but you're familiar with stu doing stu at least the processes of doing a study, um, scientific In research. Sciences, and stuff. Yes. Okay, good. That's yes. that's what we need too, because because I needed somebody smarter than me to tell me that that what I was reading was actually making sense. But we'll get to that. We're gonna say the best for last. Um, I know. Hopefully, a lot of people want to hear about that. But the first thing I wanted to cover tonight, um, a little bit, is a game I don't play. Russell said he played it a little bit. Um, my yeah. son plays the hell out of Rust, and recently, I think it was fairly recently, Rust added uh, female avatars to the game, and I'm fairly certain that Rust has always had a random character. It's always been a random character generator. You don't get to make your own character. Uh, and you're basically originally you were assigned a character and, and your race and appearance is pretty much random. Now your race, appearance and gender are completely random. And I found it kind of interesting that some of the same people that were really upset two years ago when Ubisoft um, made a really lame excuse about not having female characters in Assassin's Creed by saying it was just too hard to animate them. The Rust developers are now saying that it's just too expensive to make a character generator. And a lot of people are calling this a, um, what's the phrase I saw in Geek and Sundry, a, um, a step in the right direction for the discussion about gender in video games. Um, which is interesting because, that, I mean, that's such a lame excuse that the, that the guy doesn't want to make a character generator. And he seems to be putting this off as some sort of uh, progressive idea i mean would how would you guys feel i mean i know how i would feel how would you guys feel uh if you didn't have a choice not not so much because i know most people don't care about playing female characters. i don't care i usually play female characters in rpgs because the art's just better but what if you didn't have a choice that's yeah. a very important point i mean for my perspective in general i like to play as female characters in rpgs not because i like to to experience the game through a woman, but because I have some choice in making the character. Mm -hmm. And and it's not just the female side of it. I mean, it's just getting to choose your own character throughout. Right. When it comes to me, it just matters how I'm feeling at the present time. I played mm -hmm. World of Warcraft for a lot, and I had like 10 characters on many servers, and I would, I would occasionally create a female character, occasionally cre create a male character. It didn't right. really matter. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I would create one... I created a, ma a female account that was kind of like my, my what I use for storage. Essentially, I created an extra one just to dump interesting stuff in. Right. But and I had a female character that I created that, that I had a lot of fun with as like as I think it was a hunter type. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't I don't really care. I don't really care. Maybe I'll play as a woman. It's nice to have the choice. Right. But I don't really care. Yeah. And I, th I think that that's how it strikes me too. Is player choice? I mean, not a whole lot of gaming companies do very well when they limit player choice. I mean players want more and obviously when when you make a game like you know when you make a game with one single player like um um you know you've got lara croft in the tomb raider series lara croft is the character and, and having a character generator in a game like that see i mean you could do it you could have laura and larry croft and and it would probably work just fine just well, like you well, could that's a story driven game that right it's a little exactly, exactly. it's a little harder to write a script with with generic gender um, specifications in the script and, and, and mm -hmm. pull it off. Otherwise, you wind up having to write two separate scripts and obviously it's going to drive anything up. But in a game which like Rust... Why, or, which is why Saints Row 
the one, a series that doesn't care about that, the series like Saints Row, doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Right. The story, the storyline doesn't change based on what you do that. But if you made, like, you guys said the expense it would take to make uh, the storyline about Laura Croft, you've got an established character. Right, and really you really would have to write. Backstory. You'd have to write two separate scripts, and that's actually using these to write backstory. That's what right, Laura and Croft and you don't hear. You don't hear a lot. I mean, uh, Tomb Raider is probably one of the more popular single-player adventure um, story games on the market. You don't, really don't hear a lot of people complaining. Guys don't really complain that they have to play Lara Croft. They don't. They don't care because usually the game is fun enough and the story is good enough that that's that's the important part. Same thing with Bayonetta. Um, really kind or, of a niche game, but yeah. wildly successful. And I didn't hear any guys complaining that they had to play Bayonetta. They they really didn't care. So when guys. Oh, we can... Or we can go to any other game and go say, like, what? There's no female Dante? Mm-hmm. Fine. There's no female mm-hmm. Link? We're fine with that. Right. It's exactly. just the characters themselves. We don't yeah. need... So I thought I thought that was kind of I thought it was kind of interesting that that this is somehow such a great thing now. But but they are catching some flack. I, what I was reading recently, and this is what kind of got me with the Geek and Sundry article, is the Geek and Sundry article talks about how good this is and how progressive this is and how... how good this is for the conversation about gender and gaming and then kind of toward the end they say but the transgender community has really given them some pushback on this because they feel it's it's much more impactful on them when they don't get to choose like and, and i can kind of see that a transgender and, and not to speak trying to bring in what i know from people i've talked to and, and what i've understand and a, a transgender person feels like they've been given no choice in life and now they feel like there's something, you know, they were born as one gender and they don't feel like that's their gender. So they weren't given mm-hmm. a choice. And now that they now that medical science and psychological science and, and pharmaceutical science has given them a choice, they're pursuing that. And then this game comes out that might be very popular and might be wildly fun. And that choice is taken away again. And, the, and so they're giving some pushback, too. And, and the Geek and Sundry article was kind of like, oh, you know, they're getting this this blowback from the transgender community. But, you know, it's still a really good thing. And it's like, you know, if this had been any other, if 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 this had been a game marketed towards women, if a ton of women played this game, this would be a terrible thing because all these women would be forced to play men. And that's just terrible. Like, don't you feel like that would be the story if that were the case? Yeah, I agree. I in the agree original completely. game, in the original alpha of the game, you were all naked dudes. Right, because they didn't have mm-hmm. the female avatars. naked dudes. Yeah. And <laughs> granted, you... grant it is, I mean, it's a survival game. It's it's marketed mostly toward male gamers. That's probably going to be their target demo it, and their primary market. It's you know. a first-person game. This right. This is why mm-hmm. I don't understand it. That shouldn't matter. <laughs> but you can... Exactly. Person. Yeah. The only part of the body you see is your hand. Well, can't you? You can do a 3D view on oh, Rust, I think. Maybe. I think maybe you can. Well, at person, least there's a third person view. I there? think so. The screenshots I've seen, it looks like there is. Otherwise, people are taking screenshots of other characters, maybe from a from a close range or something. But it looks like there's a 3D view going on. But I don't know. There I actually f- is. Yeah. I, f- I just I found that kind of a, an interesting. Um, story and the way it's going, it still looks like it's developing because some places are still haven't the the usual suspects still haven't written their articles. Uh, so I'm sure it will get more interesting as the week goes on when we start hearing from some of the more um, uh, lazy games media when they uh, when they start writing that once they get there. I guess once they get their marching orders from the hive mind and start pushing out the articles. Um, so yeah, that'll take us. I guess that's all I had on it. Do you guys have anything else on rest? Yeah, I just wanted to say it's very interesting that as as progressives try to push a narrative about progression and giving people, you know, positive representation in video games, you would think that would lead you to choice, Mm -hmm. to give the player more choice over their character, over who they are playing as. Because, uh, I mean, there's no conclusive study on whether you can or cannot relate to your character yet. Right. The only studies done on this just prove uh, prove that some people can connect to their character and some people can't. Right. So if it varies from person to person and you're trying to make a game that has a random character generator, mm-hmm. why not give your players a choice? Right. You know. Have you heard of the forest? Is another survival game. Rings a bell. Yeah. 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 Except on the island, you deal with cannibals. They oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crash on a plane. Yeah, it's a very it's similar type of game to Rust. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think every character is exactly the same. 
Yeah. Every every main character, and you can play it on a server with multiple people. It's just that, to be perfectly honest, I don't care that I don't have a choice. Really, it's, right. it's not. It's not that it's a bit. The mo- the game's in early access. Maybe they plan to do it at some point, but right now, I don't really care. Yeah. I'll just I'll yeah. enjoy the let's plays that I watch of it every so often. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Game so, yeah. Rums did a really good one. Something uh, something interesting is to watch going forward. But yeah. um, so the uh, the next story we were going to talk about. Um, I wanted to talk about the social autopsy site. And Russell, this is the first time you were hearing of it, so I wanted to give you a little bit of a um, sort of a drop or the, the, the bare bones basics of what this is supposed to be. So they, they, they claim to already have 22,000 entries in their database, which nobody can confirm or verify, so we have really no idea. But what they want to do is they want to create basically a name and shame board. They want people to submit uh, other people who they see saying something hateful or harassing or offensive online, they want them to submit screenshots. And the caveat is they want these people's real names and where they work, or at least their real names, because once they have their real names, they say they can look up where they work and where they live and, and all that other stuff. But they want to take away the anonymity from people who troll online. And essentially, that means they need to get these people's friends to report them, which to me, that starts the, the moral and ethical issues right there. I mean, I'm, I'm reminded too often of ter- terrible moments in history where people have asked other people to report their friends and neighbors like i mean we can go back into some really awful periods of human history snitches where, get stitches right i mean <laughs> not just that but i mean how that it just invokes so many horrible periods of human history when we've asked our neighbors to report the people that live next to them or their family members their friends to the government or to some other you know authority that's doing some sort of crusade or or whatever it is they're doing so it it just that right there rubbed me the wrong way immediately. But then to take away the anonymity from people online, because a lot of people rely on that just to function. There are a lot of people online who can only function online, either because um, they're on the autistic spectrum or they have social disorders. They can't leave the house. Um, they can't talk. Yeah, they can't talk to other people. Maybe they can leave the house, but they just can't talk to other people. Um, there are so many people that rely on on interaction online to actually have interaction because they have that anonymity. Anonymity. They have that that mask that they can put up, and it allows them to be somebody else or just to be able to talk. And the, this is going to be abused by trolls. Oh, trolls will counter absolutely. Things, absolutely, especially for people they don't like. Yep. That that's my biggest fear, and and right away, that clicked um, as a problem and. The story progressed because, I don't know, I heard about it, I, I think it was on the 13th. I had heard about it right away. I'm like, this isn't right. I looked up Kickstarter's terms of use. It violated those, so I reported it. Um, it violates... Oh, it a Kickstarter project? It started as kids. Yeah, they yeah. wanted they wanted $75,000 to build this database. Uh, Did they get the money? No, it got pulled uh-huh. down. Like yeah, they got day. like four thousand dollars before we got pulled down. Yeah, it got pulled down right oh, away. Oh, so it got pulled down. So we, have, so yep. we don't really. But, but they're still going. The site is still up. Socialautopsy.com yep. is still up. It's hosted on GoDaddy though, and I'm a GoDaddy customer as well for for my site. And the site violates GoDaddy's general terms of use. We we are not allowed to use our websites on GoDaddy's service to collect um, private information or violate the privacy and publicity of other people we can't use a GoDaddy website to collect data on people. So the yeah, whole... It's, something's going to... Something's gonna, I just yeah. think this is a terrible idea. This oh, absolutely. Idea. Absolutely. Um, so now it's become a thing because apparently Zoe Quinn and Randy Harper got involved, and now anybody who doesn't like the site is apparently working for these two, which I, it's news to me. I reported before I even heard those guys were involved. Um but yeah, now it's become a huge deal. Um, this is not going to end well. This is not I, gonna end I don't well. think so either. Like it really strikes me as something terrible. Yeah, I, I find it completely ironic coming from you know from 2011 when when everybody was learning about the NSA and and spying on mm-hmm. civilians and collecting information. There was a huge uproar against that kind of situation. Right. And now you have all these like like Zoe Quinn's network, you know. You have a lot of people trying to prop up networks, which basically do just that. Right. And, it's and, just collecting information on people who you don't like. 
Yeah, and that's kind of the other thing that, that struck me as off about this is I don't like it, but it's one thing when an elected official or a law enforcement agency who is overseen by an elected official collects data on potential criminals or criminals. Um, it's a completely other thing when a private citizen collects yes. that and then puts it under the header of this person is a harasser. First of all, you're collecting data on other people without their consent, which is not something even even freaking gaming companies put out there. We're collecting your data and if you don't want us to collect your data, you need to click here and here and you need to unsubscribe. Like they give you all these options to opt out of that. Mm -hmm. But then to put that under like that's a crime. Harassment's a crime. If you're going to accuse somebody of a crime, you damn well better be right because they turn right around and sue your ass. You can't just call somebody a harasser and then print that. Like I can call you a harasser all day long, but the minute I print that and put that out on a website or a newspaper or a magazine, that's I better be right. Or mm -hmm. you could just take my ass to court and, and sue me for everything. Mm hmm like I don't I don't understand why they don't I don't I don't get why they don't get that like why don't they see that as an issue because that's that's basically what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's just not it's just I have no idea why no why uh, why they didn't talk to a lawyer before they did this. Yeah. Go ahead, Dio. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's it, I find it interesting cuz a system that is in place like this needs heavy regulating. Mm -hmm. And as you said, somebody who's not an elected official or or a group of people who are elected by its constituents it it's a very 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 gray and dark area yeah because how who's going to legislate and regulate the system mm -hmm. one person who's on top of it right it, it just that just that just doesn't work out no and secondly how are you going to process people who abuse the system yeah exactly Be, because like you said it's a very it's a very strong legal matter. You can't mm -hmm. just go out there and say X person is a harasser because why? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess we're all definitely in agreement on that. I, hopefully I will have – and this is kind of where – the, the whole thing has been really unusual because when they, when they first came out, I, I responded to a few of their tweets, um, called them out on a few things. So they didn't really respond. They were responding to other people. And then they put out this challenge – uh, we want somebody from the gaming community to explain to us what all the concerns are. So I responded and I said, Real, like, really, you'll, if you get something like that, you'll print it. Will you really print it? And then they followed me, but they didn't respond, which was really unusual. Because um, usually sites that I interact with like that don't don't follow me on, on Twitter because, I don't know, because of all the other stuff that's been happening in the last two years. But then they, then, you know, I retweeted them a few hours later and I'm like, I'm I'm willing to write this article if you're willing to print it. Will you take me up on this? On this, I mean, you put that challenge out there. You want somebody to write something, and you'll publish. They were willing to publish it on their site. They said, um, and after that got some retweets, and I and something else came up. They said sure. Now I reached out to their press contact to get some questions answered to do my due diligence. Uh, haven't heard back, so my my determination was 48 hours. I haven't got a response back. I'm gonna find out where they want me to send the the post. Uh, I tweeted about that just before dinner time tonight, and I still haven't um, haven't heard a response. Nope, no response back yet. So I'm gonna give them like another 48 hours, and then it's going live on my site one way or another. But it just it just seems that something's not right. Like it's either the most elaborate troll op that we've ever seen, or these people really are living in a fantasy world. Yeah. What I find very interesting is their behavior on social media because they have turned the, the whole situation into a huge drama fest. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, they even got, they, they even turned this into a, like everything in gaming nowadays, they turned this into a GG versus non GG issue. Right. And, and it's, it's not about Gamergate. It's not about, it's not about, you know, social drama. Right. This is a very, very dangerous legal action you're trying to take. Yeah. And, and it strikes people as wrong immediately. I, I was talking to a buddy of mine uh, Saturday night. Uh, we went out and got dinner and, and 
had gone to beer fest actually that day here locally and then we went to dinner and and he's not he's not on social media at all which is really weird he's kind of a strange cat like that uh he doesn't have facebook page he doesn't have twitter he plays games online but he doesn't interact like with the community all that much um and so he has no idea of any of this and i just gave him basically the quick rundown this is what this site wants to do and immediately he's like that's not right you know if your gut if your gut reaction is something's not right there then something's probably not right you know yeah so the other thing that brought me the wrong way was um owens the you know the person running the kickstarter and and she was the one involved yeah candace basically came out saying that this would be a great tool to teach children how to use the internet yes like teach them the the consequences of their behavior on the internet right and my first thought was what kid is using social media right and that but, and that's an interesting point because you're right in the in the frequently asked question video from the 22nd they she specifically says of course they're going to include children in the database because why not um, mm-hmm. If they're on Facebook and their parents let them be on Facebook, then obviously it's okay. Um, and then the Twitter account said, no, we we're, some of the people don't want to do that, and some of our people do want to do that. And then, they, then we're not sure. And now in this article she wrote, she says, we're definitely not including children. But my question is, how will you know? How are you going to mm-hmm. age verify anybody if you have anybody? An, exactly. Yeah, you have a you have a girl who posts something on Facebook really mean to one of her friends, and her friend submits it. If she's 16, 17, 18, 18 years old, she might look nineteen. She might not. You, I've seen thirteen year olds that that look sixteen, seventeen years old, and how will you know? And the problem becomes in the United States at least we have the COPA law. You cannot collect data on anybody under the age of 13 without parental consent. You can't. It's a crime. Exactly. So I don't know how they're going to, how are you going to know? Like you would have to go to them and have them verify their age. And then who in their right mind is going to go, sure, yeah, I'm 18. So now you can put me on your name and shame board. Like, Yeah, yeah. It, it's the same issue that propped up in the 90s when the internet became famous. Like, are you sure you're 18? Yeah, yeah. of course. Oh well, yeah, everybody clicks yes because yeah. I want to look at the porn that's going to download exactly. from my dial-up one line at a time. But yeah, of course we all said yes. I'm over 18. So, yeah. And, and, she, yeah. and she said something that was true and something that I agree with is the fact that parents aren't doing everything they can today when it comes to social media yes i mean we've seen parents give their kids smartphones and access to the internet Mm -hmm. for no goddamn reason because right where's your kid from eight to five yeah probably at school so why would he need a phone with access to the internet you know yep yeah my kid didn't get a cell phone until he was 16 i think yeah Yeah. i i I didn't get internet till i was like 17 so yeah no and she is right and and the, the thing that strikes me and the part that makes me not think they're completely out of their minds is some of the stuff they say is true. And exactly. some of what they want to do is good, just not the methods are really just not there. Exactly. Like, That's like, my point, exactly. Yeah. That you, you are right when, you, when it comes to kids being on the internet and not knowing what they're doing because parental guidance is lacking. But mm-hmm. you don't go around and say, oh, I'm just going to collect data on the minor to protect right. them. Right. Because it doesn't. doesn't. Work that way. I mean, could you imagine somebody at a high school like how how awful was high school if you were bullied? And could you imagine somebody sitting in front of this website punching in all their classmates' names and finding exactly. somebody? Oh my God, that would be that would be devastating. You you'd have yeah. Oh, it'd be and awful. Then, and then imagine it would be awful, yeah. then imagine it's <clears throat> just that one kid that had access to the internet. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's that one kid who's really good at pu- putting stuff online. Yeah. And he's it's just sitting there gathering data around on all his on all his classmates and basically yeah. branding all of them harassers yeah. either because they don't like him or they were mean to him. Exactly. It, it, it's just wrong. Just it, it's bad news. Yeah. Bad news. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. So, speaking of bad news. Um, and I want to make sure I have the right the the article because it was it was funny when I when I caught wind of the new study, and and we're going to use this in quotes because the more I find out about this, the more I find out that this is just a bunch of shit. Um, I think it was Time uh, was the first time the the first publication I saw push this out here, and they 
literally took the supposition that this study made and used it as a headline that video games cause sexism like that that was a new study s concludes that video games cause sexism and the problem is the study from what i'm understanding the study didn't conclude that it doesn't and time didn't even go verify that that's what they concluded they like it's almost like they had somebody like me read the study like the header and the summary of the study and go oh that's what they did and then write up an article which the more i read it the more something felt wrong and that's why i wanted diogenes on because you know as a layman i looked at it and went something like the math really threw me because I'm, I'm i'm not good at math and they and they used a lot of big words obviously because they wanted it to sound really smart but i did notice a couple things that really stood out as um off to me anyway uh so from a layman's perspective i wanted to give that real quick and then we'll get into the actual so you can tell me whether i'm completely out of it or or if we're going down the right path here but the first thing i noticed is is the sample size was extremely small it was like 150 154 152. 152 people so it was a very small sample yeah. size and then the way they tested the the empathy what they wanted to figure out is did exposure to certain types of games d d change your empathy toward a a an image they had an image of a girl being beaten up by classmates so i'm, I'm guessing it was probably somebody in their age group because the way they described it made it sound like it was a girl being bullied by other people in their class so they have these high school students play these video games for 25 minutes which frankly is not enough time to even get into a video no. game but then at the end of it, they showed them this picture and asked them on a scale, I'm guessing a scale of one to 10, probably how empathetic they felt toward the girl in the picture, which to me is a completely subjective question. Like I couldn't rate on, if you asked me to look at a picture today and tomorrow and the next day and rate it on a scale of one to 10, my mood might change how empathetic I feel toward her. Like, yes. So that really seemed extremely subjective and a very poor way to do very poor. It's, it's like asking somebody what their level of pain is. I was, I just had, okay, let me, to put it in perspective, I just had surgery, uh, for appendicitis, uh, a week before last end of last week. And they kept coming in and asking me, how's my level of pain? And I didn't know how to answer because sometimes I didn't even <laughs> feel it, but I knew it was there. So I was like, I don't know, a two. And then the next time it was like, I don't know, four. But if I push here, it's like an eight. I, I So that's like, I, it's almost like the eye doctor thing. Better here, yeah. or better there. Better here, one or two. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, those are the two points anyway that I looked at it and went, something's really off about this study. And then I read the comment at the bottom, which said there was no direct link they didn't the the study didn't actually find the direct link between the video games and, and change in empathy mm -hmm. so now i'll let the expert tell me how good okay, or bad so, that was go ahead so you're correct when you when you make the the analysis of how time and other publications look at studies like this the, what they do is basically they look at the title and if it's you know clickbaity enough they look at the abstract and mm -hmm. if, and if it and if it kind of um, proves their point, they go with it. They run with it. They don't look at methods. They don't look at the math behind it. They don't look at the actual results of the study, right. which is something that's really sad when I look at outside of, of the STEM community. Right. Because the first thing you're taught in science, whether you're taking biology, whether you're taking behavioral sciences, whether you're taking chemistry, is that when you write a study uh, you're gonna you're gonna want to keep as much as you want as, as much as you can outside the abstract so right. that you can make people read your journal because hmm. what's the point of having an abstract that tells you everything there is in the study right it makes sense you won't you won't read the rest so what people usually do in social studies is they they make a very juicy abstract mm -hmm. to kind of reel you in to read it okay and there's a few things that are missing from from the study in, in its abstract, and that is numbers. And mm -hmm. and that's as you said, the numbers are very sketchy. The math is very very sketchy. But if we start looking at the abstract, the only thing you have in the abstract is the number of participants. Mm -hmm. 
they only tell you, oh, we had 154 randomly assigned to play a violent sex game. Mm-hmm. And it's, okay, you're, you're not telling me much with that. Right. So I have to read the whole thing. The first thing that came into mind when I started reading this was the definition of a sexist game. Can mm-hmm. either of you define a sexist, sexist game? Uh, me personally, that is kind of what I thought was interesting because their definition probably wouldn't be the same as mine. Because they were defining a sexist game as, I mean, they used Grand Theft Auto and, and Saints Row, I believe. Yeah. Um, and their definition was just a game that had prostitutes in it or the ability to hurt women. But wouldn't, to me, the definition, that would make me carry the definition over to if a game allowed you to beat up all the men that's also sexist against men and since you can do both in those games is it really sexist like prostitutes really exist so including prostitutes doesn't produce any negative stereotype or false narrative about women because prostitutes exist especially in large cities like are depicted in Mm -hmm. these games so they're going to be there and crime exists in people commit and, crime like yeah when we are play, a violent race yeah. yeah a sexist video game custer's revenge that's pretty much the gold standard of what is pre- yeah <laughs> you've heard of that game before right yeah that yeah. one's awful that's an awful game yeah i mean yeah. i guess to me a sexist game would, would be a game that intentionally went out of its way to depict all of the female characters or all of the male characters in it as extremely over the top awful stereotypes exactly like, when i see in in both like when i see it on the easiest way to describe it is i hate sitcoms on tv most of the time because they almost always portray like take um well i can't remember the the oh the guy who does mall cop he was on a sitcom with a really good looking woman um Kevin James. Kevin James. James. Okay. So I can't remember the name of the show, but he was depicted as, yeah. So he's depicted as the overeating, bumbling, stupid, clumsy, thoughtless husband. That Mm -hmm. stereotype is pushed out in almost every sitcom during the 80s and 90s. Every husband was dumb. Mm -hmm. He was misogynistic. Like, to me, that's sexist because it's producing the same stereotype over and over again mm-hmm. which is extremely negative stereotype just like all a lot of them the wives in those shows are a lot of times they're ditzy or yep. they're careless or they're always wrecking over the car bad. or bad. yeah those yeah. that those are sexist stereotypes so to me that would be it it would be a game that goes out of its way to only depict the awful negative stereotypes that would be sexist it- yeah, well, I was thinking about it. I came up with, you know, an, an ideal for what I would consider a sexist game. And mm-hmm. it basically is Wife Beater Simulator. That, that would be pretty sexist. <laughs> yeah, that would be I awful. Mean, I mean, how can you objectively create a sexist game if it's not, you know, directly creating a game where you just beat the living mm, out of your wife? Right. I, I, yeah, and that makes sense because if that were the purpose, like in Grand Theft Auto... Granted, you can take drugs, you can commit crime, you exactly. can you can interact with prostitutes, but you, you don't have to. Murder everybody. But you, exactly. don't, but you have don't have to. to. And and yeah, and that's the key. You do have the choice to do it, but you don't have to. Right. That makes and, total sense. And if you look at the introduction in the in the study, what they say is what they consider a sexist game is any game that has a sexual um, a representation of women. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and that doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, exactly, because. It it sounds it strikes me off as something very Puritan. Oh, very yeah. Sex sexualization isn't sexism. No. It's not the same thing. And no. you can be a very sexy person and still retain your value as a person. Just because you're very sexy or use sex to gain money doesn't mean you're losing your value as a woman or a man. Right. You know. Yeah. But exactly. the study makes the but the study makes the assumption. And what's very interesting is that if you're going if you're going to analyze the study, you're going to make a lot of assumptions based on what they give you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The first one being uh, they have three types of games in the study. They they expose basically kids because when you look at the average age, it was 16 or something. Mm-hmm. They expose these kids to games like Half Life, GTA, and some other games like 3D ping pong or something. Mm-hmm. Right. And they 
ascribe they decided to put the games in different cat- categories. Uh, GTA was the violent sexist game. Uh, Half Life was the violent non sexist game, and right. 3D Ping Pong and the other ones were basically the neutral games. Yeah. Because they wanted to have some sort of control, like you always do in any, any kind of right. research. But what's interesting is that in Half Life, if, if you get to kill men and you choose to kill exclusively men, wouldn't that be sexist too? It would be to me. Again, they're exactly. going to say that's what we've always done. So why is it an issue like that? Or it was the war game. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so where do you draw the line? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. The, the study clearly has a problem in how it defines the, the question. That's that's yeah. That seems to be the that's biggest the issue big, right up the front. The big problem is exactly. how it defines the question. But in reality, there are are there sexist games? Yes. Yes, of I course. I gave a good example of one: Custer's mm-hmm. Revenge. Yeah. That no there one. Are. Will, no good person will defend that game. <laughs> it's no. not a good game, neither in how it plays or what the message of the movie, the game, right. is, is horrible. Exactly. And if, some, and if somebody ever comes up with Wife Eater Simulator, I'm going to call it sexist. Yeah. Mm. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it, but then again, we'll also say that it has a right to exist. It has a right to exactly, live and course. die on the market. That's the way everything should be. Get punished in the market like it should. Yes. Yeah, Exactly. exactly. Um, so yeah uh, Go ahead. okay so another thing they they define in the study which is another assumption you have to make is about masculine beliefs mm-hmm. and what they define them as masculine beliefs is basically negative yeah Mas- they define masculinity as being as being aggressive as being somebody who's willing to damage others mm-hmm. and they say that this is what masculinity refers as as a normative belief about how men are expected to think Right. Which is, and, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, and when you look at the questions they used in this category, they asked the kids whether they were, they were willing to do anything in their power to have sex with a woman. This is, this is one of the sentences they used to measure masculine beliefs. Right. Which is kind of begging the question, because you don't know if that kid is going to say yes but in the back of his mind, he's saying, of course, I would never drug her or rape her. Or, right. You know. Because within your power, that's such a vague, yeah, it's such vague. a vague definition for everybody. Because uh, to, to use an example I had not too long ago, we were I was talking with somebody about corporations. And uh, I think Bernie Sanders had tweeted something about banks. Banks should not be concentrating on making as much profit as possible. That he sh- they should be concentrating on giving people the best loans possible, or something to that effect. That's yeah. not that's not the and, point of a bank. The point right. of a bank is to make profit, so that they can give Certainly loans. The, the yes. more they make. The reason that but, of a private company is to make money. Right, but when I respond to that, I got a little bit of pushback from one of my followers who basically said that makes corporations corrupt because they're willing to do and are there. They want to make as much money as possible, and to make as much money as possible, you automatically have to do corrupt things in order to within do that. And the I, law. With, within and, the law, yeah. Well, and even yeah, he said, that. he even said they would do shady things or corrupt things that are still legal in order to make <laughs> as much money as possible. And my, descri- my basic description was, even if I say, I want to make as much money as possible in my life, as possible means as possible for me. Eventually, exactly. I'm going to hit, eventually, I'm going to hit my moral limit. I want to make yeah. as much money as possible, and to me, possible hits a wall when it comes to committing a crime or hurting somebody else. Exactly. So when you say, are you willing to do anything within your power to have sex with a woman, anything within somebody's power, they could automatically have these limits in place that says, well, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to buy her flowers. I'm willing to take her to exactly. dinner. I'm willing to treat her awesome. I'm willing to do anything within my power Oh, wait a minute. You mean get violent and use dr- No, I wouldn't do that. No, exactly. So, they, and they yeah, didn't right. follow up with that question. They, they didn't follow up with the question, what would you do? Right. Which that's and, the determining factor right there. Exactly. And, and, and to me personally, I think they intentionally left that out. It seems so, yeah. Because yeah. How, do you not, how do you not follow a question like that with what would you do? Right. Because you've got to know what's the range. I mean, that's, that's what a study is for, is to find out the limits of human behavior so you've got to explore those limits right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
there is another assumption when they're starting to build a premise. And, and keep in mind, we still haven't built the methods for this study. This is just the inter introduction right. of the study. So the other assumption they made that it was that violent games would affect men more than they will affect females when it comes to empathy, mm -hmm. which which I think is is very you know, it it's very idiotic. Cause how can you tell me where if if you see a pattern of men losing empathy for women because they're beating them in a video game, wouldn't it do the same thing for women? I would think so. Presumably. There's no, there, there's no, as as far as I know, in neuroscience, there is no basic difference in the development of empathy. Right. Yeah. Men and women have the same capacity for empathy. So if men and women have the same capacity for empathy, you would think that it would affect them to some extent. It should, yeah. But this study just assumes it won't. Yeah, that's not a that's not a good assumption to make. You you should at least ask the question. You know, it's, exactly. So yeah, that. So and and if I remember right, let me see if I'm remembering our discussion on this. And they did not even ask the female participants about the empathy factor, did they? They, they did. They did. However, it does not factor in the conclusion. They didn't use that's, it. That's yeah. They didn't use the numbers. Gotcha. For the conclusion. Okay, that's right. That, that was the problem. Gotcha. So, so we don't even know if those numbers would have changed the conclusion at all because they weren't even included. So, exactly. Either they weren't included because they were inconclusive, or they weren't included because they did change the assumption that they were making. And mm -hmm. in either case, we just don't know because they didn't put them in there. It's a very, it's a very sketchy play with numbers because when you look at the conclusion segment, what they say about those numbers is that they weren't significant. Mm. However, the differences in empathy between the games was not significant. It yet. didn't look like it, yeah. No, it, it wasn't. I, I ran this through what we basically do when we do statistical analysis is we use a t-test, mm -hmm. which is a test to determine whether two different means of a, a, two different mean results are significantly different or the same. Right. When I ran the, the whatever little results they actually gave in the study, because there's no actual raw data in this study, right. there's no significant difference between the empathy in playing a violent sexist game, playing a violent game, or playing a neutral game. It was not significant. However, in the conclusion, they tie in the strong masculine beliefs mm -hmm. with the difference in empathy for men which is a number they don't have in the study and say that in, there's an indirect correlation between in, an increase in masculine beliefs and a decrease in empathy for women gotcha and that's where i got i got a little confused when i was reading it because when i first went over the summary and, and what i could understand um in the the methods it almost sounded like they were saying that an increase like i had to read it again to find out that they actually showed them a picture and asked them what they thought of the picture it almost read like they were saying an increase in masculine behavior or how the male players um identified with mm -hmm. the male characters was a direct like like they just took out the whole empathy thing and they just said the higher their masculine thoughts the less empathy they automatically have that's how it read until i went back again so it so it does really come off like they're trying to say that because a cursory reading of it it really comes off as just well the more masculine you are the less empathy you have so and then that was go. basically the point of the study i mean at least that's what people are running with yeah that's but it's not what it showed what the study basically showed was that in, in, in a small period of time, you can see an increase in masculine behavior. Mm -hmm. However, it's a very loosely defined masculine behavior. Right. Like, yeah, what did they determine? Because that, I mean, that's well known. That's that's well known and documented in, in all the studies of aggression mm -hmm. and violence in video games. Every and not just study, video games. yeah, well, and anything, any kind of anything. entertainment yep. that you that you take, they say that during and shortly after 
whatever per, whatever you're participating in or whatever you're consuming, whether it be a violent movie or a violent video game, during and shortly after, you have an increase of aggressive feelings or mm -hmm. uh, like they say in younger children, they tend to, and we see this if you have kids or if you've ever been around kids, they watch a really cool like action movie and for the next hour they're running around like they're action heroes kicking and throwing things and, yeah. and carrying on. But then it goes away because we're human beings and we generally know the difference between fantasy and reality. Exactly. And that and that brings up the other point I wanted to make with this study. When you look at the average population, they were 16 year olds. And mm -hmm. there's something very important when you consider teenagers. It is a widely known fact. And I sent you a, I sent you basically right. a literature revision of it, of a neurological basis for consequential thinking right yeah i, I kind of skimmed it but yeah I'm, it is uh, very very well established yeah. that the differences in adolescence and in you know men or women isn't that the brain mass is changing <laughs> but there is an increase in the in the amount of white matter in the brain mm -hmm. which is a result of of and i forgive me if i get too technical with this is there's a difference in myelination of the brain which basically just means your neurons are firing at better rates and connecting better. Yeah. So there's better association between your neurons. So you're capable of doing higher reasoning. Right. And the, the reason I state this is because I sometimes jokingly say that kids are stupid, but I'm not kidding. Kids are stupid. Yeah. Kids don't yeah. have the ability of consequential thinking. Yeah, they're still they're developing that. Exactly, and and especially in the prefrontal cor cortex, which is the part of the brain that's considered to be involved in behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have we have a study by by um, a guy named Thompson back in 2000 that said that you know the the kids' brain changed dramatically after three years old. Right. However, it's been noted that it's not up, up until you're like 19 or 20 something that your your frontal cortex is fully myelinated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are lacking the basic tools for logical reasoning. Yep. And how do how do I tie in, tie this in is how do how would you expect somebody who is not fully developed to develop empathy towards mm -hmm. another person if their logical tools are not fully developed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That totally makes if they, sense. If they physiologically don't have the ability to tell, oh, this is bad because in this scenario, it, this will happen. If they yeah. don't have the tools for doing that, how can you take a study with a population that's mainly 16 year olds? Right. Now, the difference mm -hmm. between men and, and the boys and girls in this study is completely due to that difference because as everybody knows, girls begin their puberty before the boys do. They develop a little faster, yeah. Yep, they have an, they have an onset a purity around 10 to 12 years old mm -hmm. whereas boys develop around 13 to 15 year olds which means that the process of myelination that i mentioned earlier has already taken place in some of these girls yeah mm -hmm. so that could very much tell you the difference in empathy Would that they're saying happens yeah yeah absolutely it sounds like it would throw off it would throw it off completely if they weren't both at the same level. Uh, Correct. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And and that factors in greatly because you don't have a breakdown of the of the different ages according to sex. Right. We only get and and this is this is the part of the math that's really sketchy is you're only presented with means. You don't get any raw data. So all the averages, nothing, no, no actual yeah, data nothing points. Nothing conclusive. You yeah. get only averages and stand, standard deviations. Now, this is useful because you can see if there is an, a significant difference between the two. However, you don't see how they got those averages. Right. You can't check for yourself if their math is any good. Mm -hmm. So in summary, the study was poorly constructed, didn't mm -hmm. have enough people in it, and had <laughs> suffered from bad definitional and probably confirmation bias. Exactly. Yeah, and I I liked somebody came to or, or somebody brought up the conclusions. Basically, all this study shows, and I think your your whole last point really shows this is your study really proved that people shouldn't let children play adult rated games. 
is, exactly. is really that's the only thing that this study really mm -hmm. showed and mm -hmm. and so then you ask where do they get off giving because as far as i know what the study was done in italy um where if i'm not mistaken the the mature rating for games is actually higher than it is in the united states it is it's 17 uh, in america so maybe is it 18 there is it peggy 18 i think it's 18 yeah, yeah. 18. so so they went even further and gave these literally 18 adult rated games to children mm -hmm. which we're not supposed to do anyway uh, and then tried to create a study out of it. So it really dropped the ball on so many levels. Mm -hmm. A good so, point that came out of this study for me, at least personally, was the amount of empathy this kids showed. Because when you look at the data, it, it, it went from one to seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you look at the means and the empathy for victims of, of violence, you had the neutral game came up with 5.03, the violent only game came up with 5.29, and the violent sexist game came up with 5.02. So this is some, this are some pretty empathic kids. Yeah, and and it sounds like they were more empathetic after playing the violent sexist game. Exactly. Or, oh, I'm sorry, no, the scale went down they, a little they, bit. They were, so. It went a little bit, but they were equally empathetic when they were playing a neutral game when they were playing a violent sexist game. Yeah, and to me, a point... Uh, point oh one. Point oh one variance... That's not a whole lot. That really is nothing. It is. It's, it's very insignificant. That's that's nothing, you know. Especially and, and, when we're giving such a subjective rating. Um, yeah. And the that. problem is that they say that this only happened in boys. However, the data you're given is is just a means of boys and girls when they gave their results. Yeah. So you don't there, even know. There's no separation of the value, so you don't know. Wow. So yeah, that's the kind of stuff that we gamers get to read all the time about how awful we are and how sexist our games are and the violence that it causes. And then we look deeper and realize that our media is just a bunch of brain dead idiots that will post <laughs> anything that science puts sciencey words in front of and posts on a site. So yep. great fun. Uh, thankfully, uh, I've lived through it before. I'm I'm wearing this because in remembrance of, and you guys can't see it, but I'm wearing a Dungeons and Dragons shirt with the classic red box logo on the front of it. Um, unintentionally, I didn't I didn't wear it intentionally for tonight, but I put it on, and now I'm realizing that I went through this in the late '80s and early '90s with with role playing mm -hmm. games, and now we're going through it with games, with video games, and it's the same same like russell said same moral panic bullcrap and a different paint job different mask um back in my yep. day it was the religious right and the puritans who hated rock and roll and dungeons and dragons and now it's these yep. neo-puritans i've been calling of these uh, supposedly progressive liberal free everything <laughs> people who really just want to do the same thing they just want to control it because they don't like it for one reason or another so yeah that's what we get to deal with. So yep. that pretty much concludes everything we wanted to talk about. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Diogenes, for doing the research because I know you did um, some hard work looking at that study and writing up your analysis. No and uh, I really appreciate it. Hopefully the viewers appreciate it because it gives us a better view than we've been getting because even some of the articles that tore that study apart really didn't give us an educated view of it they just kind of said this is bull crap because it doesn't make any sense to me and it didn't make any sense to me either but it doesn't make any sense to me because i don't deal with those kinds of things every day and mm -hmm. it's been a long time since i did scientific anything um, high school was well over 20 years ago so uh, um, so that's why we uh we're glad to have you thank you guys yeah and i think this will conclude our show thank you everybody for watching and this will be up on youtube if you missed it but uh, we'll see you next week mm -hmm.